What's maybe your favourite smelling plant you're going to put in this garden? Uh, it's called a fart flower. <laughs> <laughs> we are working in Beaconsfield. Beautiful little tiny corner plot. Lovely lady who lives here. And she wanted somewhere nice to sit in her garden because she hasn't really got anywhere to sit. So when the sun sets over there, there's going to be a 2.4 metre circle just here for the little bench. It's going to be three sizes of English limestone. It's going to look beautiful. We'll put it together in the three different random sizes of the rectilinear standard paving units and then we'll cut it into the circle afterwards. It's going to be surrounded by beautiful plants, going to smell good, look good, make her feel properly happy. It's also going to look much tidier. So from the back of the house, when she looks out of the window, she's not just going to see this green carpet of, what are these, shabby chic trees? Her brief was lots of different colours, lots of Kalashi colours, an assortment, a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. Well, she knows exactly what she's going to get because there's a precise planting plan. We did the 3D drawings, we demonstrated the height and the spread of some of the plants as they mature. So the lady of the house has actually got a good understanding or appreciation of exactly what plant she's having, where they're going to go and what they're going to look like. We're just about to go to Babylon Plants over in Oxfordshire and choose all the plants. So what we got here this very big tray i'll try and pull them all out but it's the end of the summer they're all dying back all the energy has now been absorbed back into the roots ready to burst into life in the spring when i say burst into life these these echiums they're quite they're, they're the small variety not the the ones that you normally get in the canary islands they go two and a half three meters tall they take two seasons to uh, to get to where they need to be in the uk so i try not to plant those unless i can avoid it so looking at these these are an echium crimson and i think they're beautiful just less than a meter high and again we've got a tray of about 15 of these here and sort of clump them close together and you get mass powering massive color and these sort of vertical spikes reaching for the sky they're great what's your favorite smelling flower in this garden well if you just hold that thought check these out it's called a daphne normally covered in flowers this time of year right the way through the spring you have to have plenty of free draining soil lots and lots of grit and lots of compost great once established but just be careful when you plant them they, they smell like um, rich lady perfume <laughs> to expand on the subject of stuff that smells absolutely beautiful now I've not, I've not heard of Beauty of Moscow before. Syringa. This is the most amazing of sort of powerful smells. That's what it's going to look like. It doesn't look very big now, but they grow incredibly quickly. Great big fronds of most amazing. And they're pink and they're white. We've got a standard Syringa. Incidentally, Syringa is the Latin name for lilac. They don't look too impressive. Well, not now they don't. Um, they look amazing come the end of spring. I don't think there's a colour that we don't have, as I said. It might be a bit clashy. The client wants as many different colours as possible. Red, blue, pink, green, lilac, white, quite a few whites. Oh, there's amelanchia. Millions of little tiny star-shaped flowers. Uh, and then all the leaves come out. So all of this will just be a complete sort of mass of millions of tiny little flowers. We've got a couple of different types of Rebecca. We've got some that actually sit a little bit taller to give that little bit of extra height and they're slightly brighter yellow and these just have little tiny burnt umber bits at the bottom of the petals and the flowers are slightly smaller so you've got taller slightly larger blooms with a black face black eyed Susan I just think it adds to the layering you can't help but put your favorite plant in a garden when you're creating a beautiful garden and when you're giving carte blanche to plant as many different colours as you can. This is a good excuse to plant this. This is the Chinensis variety of a Cornus Cusa. It's a hybrid. Uh, the flowers are much bigger. They come out white and then they end up turning to a sort of a pinky colour over a few months. Flowers do stay on the tree for quite some time and it is a massive spectacle when it does come into flower. Big heart-shaped leaves and they change this beautiful colour during the autumn. Then the Fiesta Resistance, it's called Euonymus solatus. When it's in leaf throughout the year, the leaves are all green. And then of course, as soon as the weather changes at the beginning of autumn, it bursts into this sort of bright pink, almost glow in the dark. It's called a burning bush. So these two spectacular plants they offer an instant backdrop can't wait to get these in they're going to be surrounded by lots of other colorful plants that we've already covered we are going to come back in the spring and take lots more photographs maybe another cheeky little video but for now i'm carl harrison thanks for tuning in